picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Well, good morning. It's Monday and start of another week. And you know, I like the good, clean slate as much as anybody. Some things you just, sometimes you just have to take stock of what's around you and just say, enough. Stop digging the hole and 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 clean. And that's what I did this morning. I cleaned the day. I know I'm going to be making a lot of dust this week with the uh, uh, putting on the photo etch. And so I felt necessary to clean my workspace, get it as, as pristine as I could. Not very much, you'll see. But you know, also run the sweet, run the vacuum cleaner, clean up your things around, get a shower, get a shave, get you know, jump up and get ready for the day. So uh, having been revitalized, uh, I will say first that uh, I apologize for not being more organized last week and, and putting the video up before I went away for the weekend. But uh, that was part of the mental cleaning house. I just wanted to stop what I was doing and enjoy some time with some friends and uh, that's what I did and I make no apologies for it. Uh, so we are back to the Raptor. Now the Raptor in many cases, or in many aspects of it, is well done uh, or, or well close to being done. Come on, get this out of here. Um, as you can tell, the you know the, the a lot of the big painting has been done. But what I'm going to do, what I'm going to be doing this week is going back in and redoing the photo etch to conform to the paragraphics offerings for this fine kit. Um, also during this week, I'm going to be uh, shoving out some a uh, uh, couple of big orders that came in because as soon as I uh, let known that I had my Raptor templates ready for purchase. Wouldn't you know, luck that it would be, uh, my reseller said, yes, we'll take those by the dozen. So uh, I have to get those uh, plotted and packaged and out the door this week. So good on that, but that shouldn't take uh, too much time away from the photo etching. So let's get started. Okay, let's get reacquainted with the parts. And after looking at last week's video, when I was putting it together, I realized how kind of scattershot it had been. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more organized this week with what I am doing. Uh, to be sure, there are a lot of parts already that I have done for this Raptor with Paul's Photo Edge. First of all, we'll start with um, the step, which, yes, you can see I've moved up to the place it's supposed to be. I had it down there by mistake and then second look at, and once I start fitting this into the inside and looking at the instructions I see that Paul meant to put it up here which does make a whole lot more sense since floor space on the floor is at a premium but I've got the uh, vents in and those will have a light behind them a diffused light and that's pretty much it for this piece now um, I've also done these bulkheads, which you saw me report on last week, and I do need to touch the paint on the instrument panels because, yes, I know that those, those buttons are awfully sloppy, but I was going to put them on and then touch the paint around them, so that has yet to be done. Same thing with these guys up top. Um, and uh, get these guys ready for their final paint. Same thing with that. Boy, is that... I know that's really bad. That needs to be fixed a lot but uh, those so these are essentially done outside of the cosmetics these are the pieces that need to have the majority of the work done to them as far as uh, slicing off all the detail and then poking holes into them to put lights to light it up from behind and then these guys get scraped down and replaced with uh, the photo etch versions of themselves and um, then we're pretty much into the realm of lighting after that uh, I've got this more or less ready to uh, set aside I've got the lights in them I've got the photo etch in the um, engines uh, obviously this needs to be grimed up with its final uh, griming and greasing but to, before I do that I need to decide how many lights I'm going to be putting in there. It looks like there's a set of tail lights there, and there's also lights up here. So, uh, and I've got plenty of SMLEDs. People have asked where I get my SMLEDs. I get them from here. Evans Designs 
www.modeltrainsoftware.com and you want to know why I get them? Because of that. They are already wired up my friends and I do not have to do that impossibly small tedious soldering. Uh, I don't have the patience for it. I don't have the eyesight for it. Uh, so I will pay the extra to have somebody else do that for me. I know you can get these probably cheaper in bulk and do your own, but these already have the resistors on them, and they're already ready to go between 5 and 13 volts, so they are good to go for whatever uh, per multi purposes I would use because anything I do is going to be in the 9 to 12 volt range. So those are already set, and I can get the size and color that I want, and I'll just... I'll just go that extra step and have that already pre-done for me. But I'm going to put bulbs here, here, and then on the wings, I'm going to put them fore and aft of here. So, that, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a Christmas tree when all things are done. But uh, that's the way I wanted to go on this. I built this out of the box version, and now I want to do the bells and whistles version. So I am going to start small and work my way into this week. I am going to start with this piece. I need to chip away all of the flat surface, all of the surfaces to make that flat. I need to replace it with the photo etch part, which is right there. And then once that photo etch part is in place, I need to uh, map out where the holes get drilled for the lighting. And we'll just take it from there. So um, let's get started. Radio. Now I've got the, I'm trying to avoid that glare of the fluorescent light in the desk, sorry about that. But I've got the uh, console all sanded down and, and all the uh, raised detail shaved off. I've got the decal or the backlit film that uh, goes in here. I've got that ready to go and then I've got the photo etch piece that's going to go over top of it and put it all together and it looks something like that. So what I need to do at this point is to take the, take the I'm going to take the backlit film off, put the photo etch over the area, come on, take the photo etch over the area that it's going to go and then trace out the openings so that I know how much plastic needs to be removed from the back. I suppose you could go hog wild and just remove everything but not only does that weaken the plastic part and give you less surface area to glue everything down to, but it also makes your light blocking harder to deal with. Now, this isn't going to really be a problem because the photo etch itself acts as light blocking, but uh, particularly around the edge, if I don't have to go all the way out there removing stuff, then I'm good. So all I really need to remove is, see if that, oh, that wasn't a good idea. Um to uh, again there is just the openings and then there are two little uh, you can see these openings on this side behind the uh, screen so you can kind of see the perimeter of the areas that you need to clean out so I'm going to mark those onto this continuing to dig out and gouge and otherwise destroy uh, panels and I'm kind of at a loss because Paul's usually better than this, and I don't, maybe I am uh, missing something, but the piece that he says goes here is much larger than the piece he says to replace. And he uh, is, is uh, very specific in how much of the walls need to be removed and how much of them just to be flattened off. This area in here is proving to be a bear to clean out. So what I'm going to do is cut it out completely and replace that whole area with a sheet with a piece of uh, sheet stock and then put the uh, etch over top of that. Well, so far today, this has just been heart aching and tedious work to get all this done. This has taken forever just to get these little bits cleaned out. Man, oh man, a Chevitz. It's uh, the one success I've had so far today is to get that guy kind of wrapped up. But these guys are taking forever. I do like how this turned out. I do like how this turned out. That was taking off that whole wall and uh, putting in the table. Um, of course, scraping off some of those ones that go up there. But the last bit of major scraping is looking me right in the eye. And it's all of this that has to come off. So um, it's going to be a treat to start getting the old elbow grease out. 
Okay, uh, pardon me while I had to have another cleaning fit on this table, but I was starting to lose the small bits of brass in and amongst the plastic dust. So uh, I've got this all scraped off and cleaned, uh, flattened out at least, and I'm starting to fit the brass into it so that I can see uh, how big of a hole I need to be boring into the back. And believe me, there's nothing more boring than boring holes. Uh, but that's where it needs to be come on I'm trying to shake these around with one hand it's like trying to do that little bb game where you're trying to get all the bb's in the holes but uh there's the main panel in place and thank you paul for doing this all as one piece of etch and not as you know a hundred little ones so that you can cut out the whole wall and replace it all at once it's just so so much more effective that way um but i am looking through and seeing okay i've got all the little buttons and dials opened up so I don't need to cut any more out and then just to be doing this these are just surface mounted there's no holes that need to be cut through there but holes need to be cut through here and on here so uh, I'm gonna take a little break and come back to it maybe after dinner well, that's starting to look better I'm starting to uh, see the light at the end at the end of the tunnel on these consoles a lot cleaner after you've uh, put the plates back over them, then the ugly ragged holes you for cutting into this nice plastic. So I've got these guys which just go on the surface, they don't get cut all the way through, so I can go ahead and put those down. Well hello and how do you do? It is Tuesday morning and I've already done a little bit of work before I picked up the camera this morning and that was basically in the area of painting some of these photo etch pieces to kind of get some of the uh, instrument panel look to them and now uh, what, what I want to do now at this point I've got all the holes dug out of this that need to be dug out but before I can go and put another or, or, or reclaim some of the beauty by putting a primer coat on this I want to stick down the etch that goes on the surface of this thing that does not need a pass through hole it's not getting lit so let me put those pieces of etch down and then we'll be ready to give this guy a a nice uh, unifying coat of primer. Okay, today has just been a festival of tiny work, and uh, the problem with tiny work is a lot of it doesn't show up on camera very well. But um, what I've been doing is getting this all cleaned up and getting the the big panely areas painted, and getting the surface mount uh, brass bits uh, like those little fans and the the four vents up at the top and stuff like that getting those in place and uh, same thing with this wall now I'm gonna uh, cop to trying to light that uh, computer at the back so that's gonna be interesting because there's basically no room behind that for a bulb but now that these are all set up and, and given a finish I can go ahead and start putting the decal or the decals the uh, backlight films uh, I can start gluing those to the back of the uh, photo etch so that they're ready to plop into place. So let's tr try some of that. That should be fun. Well, hi ho friends and neighbors. It is Wednesday morning and I am taking a break uh, to report because I am busily running the plotter in the background and I am between subjects right now so I can do a quick catch up on where we are. Uh, I am ready to start putting all of the backlit films i've got the frames with the backlit films in them for i did that last night and if you could see what they look like with the light shining through them they're quite pretty um but i'm getting ready to put those into the frames of where they need to go i've got the the applique uh photo etch all done on you know things that don't have to have a light pass through so those are all done i'm starting to grime up the floor in uh in preparation to putting on the walls and and nailing those down permanently um i am uh one thing i need to do is go ahead and paint the back of those where i want colored lights to come through let me see if i can turn this on if you can see okay you can see that those are looking pretty good but all of those spots don't need to be white lights uh example these need to be red so what I need to do is paint those from the back with clear 
so that when the light's shining through them, they're not all white. That's the goal now. And then I'll be ready to uh, turn that back up. I'll be ready to put those uh, into place. Um, if you can see, let me show you here. There ain't what I would call buku room behind this panel uh, between that and the back wall. So uh, I'm trying to figure the best way to do it. It's going to be with SMLEDs. It's just how I'm going to lay them out. And I think what I need to do on this inside wall is go ahead and light block it first. You can see where I've drawn off the areas where the panels will be lit. So I'm going to do a uh, light block those first so that you don't get a bunch of embarrassing light shining out through here because those lights have to be stuck I mean, those bulbs will have to be sucked stuck down to that uh, wall so uh, I mean once you get into here there's plenty of room in this column for lights so I'm not worried about that it's these guys right there that are pretty much up against the back wall and there's there's a spot for the uh, back, I'm just playing around with with the uh, position of the pilots and all that. I decided to slide one of the chairs up just to break up the action a little bit so that it's not they're not uh, so stiff. But uh, that back console there needs to be lit up, and there is just a tiny bit of room to snake a, a, a SMLED down into there. Now the problem is they're going to end up being really saucy and really obvious because there's not enough room between the light source and where it's lighting up uh, to for the light to get really diffused and spread out so it's going to get really obvious and bulby I don't know if that's a, the correct term but I've got this center console ready to go uh, it goes uh, on the front of the dashboard and I need to make a light box for the bulbs that are going to go behind that so we're down to the fun wiry stuff but the big showy thing that I want to do today is to get this wall and the back wall uh, done and maybe even glued in place on the floor and ready to go up against the uh, the interior wall so progress is progress yay Okay, uh, while the plotter is plotting its plots and plans in the other room, I am going to be tackling the last bits of photo etch that need to be done on this set, and that is for these uh, uh, stair treads or, or foot treads or whatever you want to call them. So what, it's a fairly simple replacement. You just have to sand down uh, the raised detail here and then replace them with what uh, Paul has provided. Man, there's a lot of P's in that sentence. Sorry. Um sand down the top of those and then replace them the uh paul's treads are a little more a little bit more intricate a little bit more low profile uh but uh, the treads a little bit more intricate so simple replacement up to that door uh, now you know me i i you you've watched enough of my videos you know what a stickler for for symmetry i am i like it if there's something on one side it needs to be the mirror version of it needs to be on the other side so you can forgive if there are treads here, but I gotta ask you why? Why are there treads there other than the form of uh, to uh, be symmetrical? Because if anybody knows this kit, they know or knows the subject matter knows there's a freaking wall there. There's no benefit to having treads here. You can't get in there. Not only is it, oh, I can understand the uh, the uh, Raptor being a modular kit. There are armament guns there are medical versions yeah 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 i dig all of that but the control wall that goes in here is a fairly necessary bit it's not something where you can expect to have you know a door here and you know do a, do a delorean thing where there's a door on both sides that swing up i just don't buy that so yeah okay there are treads there but they serve no useful purpose uh so this wall obviously this wing is going to be nice and clean Whereas this wing, I'm going to have uh, some grime and grit on these treads and some wear marks where you would not have them on that side. And that is my wine for the day. And now I'll jump off of my soapbox and get back to building. So these have been already painted. I painted those when they were still on the uh, photo etch uh, tree. So what I'm going to do is glue them down. 
and then mask over them with the masks I include in the set so that I can repaint the, the tan around them. And here are the now neatly put down new treads with a quick coat of gray over top of them just to clean up what's going what was going on there where I'd sanded off the paint. And now I'm ready to mask these and repaint the gray on the wings. Or I'm sorry, repaint the uh, brown on their wings or the tan on the wings, whatever that wing color is going to be. Well, good evening. Uh, it's finally the, the the plotter has finally finished for today. I got uh, the big order out and another request that came in to get today. So uh, when it rains, it pours, I guess. But uh, so now I can catch you up on where we are with the Raptor. Um, I've got this bulkhead epoxy down. I've got the chairs in, of course. Important news is I've got the dashboard in, and um, if you'll give me a second, I will hook up those lights so that you can see what they look like. And I've also got, oops, I've got the uh, sidewall done. Now, this is reflective light because of all the gapping holes in the back, so they will never be that bright and beautiful again, so drink it in while you can, but this would be, I would hope, how it would look, but... I just don't see getting that kind of an even light out of the really cramped space that that's going to have to go in. And um, I am starting to um, think about the lights that are going to go in the back. I've got the, the new pads down and I can block those and paint those tomorrow. Uh, let, me, let me hook up this. See, this is an adaptation I've made of the 12-volt uh, battery thingy. So let me, uh, oh, I'm trying to do this with one hand. There's one, there's the other, and there are the three lights. Let me shut this off and see if you can see them any better. Yeah, the, the camera blows them out, but uh, there are the three dashboard lights. And you can, I can see where I've got light leaks that I need to take care of. Some of that's reflected light, it's not really a leak. But it's actually showing up the little ones on the sides and the center one and then they end up getting a bit covered up that's just the nature of the uh, design I'm guessing but uh, it does kind of cover up the center of the inside edges of the uh, screens so I uh, see what else is there I think that catches us up for right now so uh, while this continues in now, see if we can take a good look at this before uh, it gets closed in and you can't quite see it as well. But uh, everything went in. I only lost one piece of photo etch, and you'll never notice it. You'll never miss it. So uh, I'm not going to tell you where it is. But uh, it's coming along quickly. I think the next thing to do is going to be to start stringing some more tiny red uh, formation slash marker lights. That'll be fun. Okay, friends, uh, this is where the going gets tedious. Uh, it is Thursday this afternoon. I've been working on other things to get to this point, and this is where things get ugly. I have to th start thinking about snaking wiring through everything. I think I've got a good solution for the uh, lighting of the back uh, of the back. Uh, instrument wall and that's going to need that's going to necessitate the uh, uh, use of some strip lighting some one piece there one piece there and a slightly longer piece going up the side and I think that's going to accomplish everything we need with a minimum number of uh, tiny SMLEDs the only problem is going to be uh, whether or not there's enough clearance be between the back of this and the wall that it has to sit on so that's that's where we are uh, coming up on our problems there and then the other thing is starting to run wiring uh, down these wings um, I'm going to put tail lights in them obviously there I'm going to put lights at the top there and then the running those wiring running that wiring down to uh, to the chase everything out the bottom and then coming up with a wire uh, solution for getting power to it because obviously there's no room in any of this for batteries 
so it's going to have to have uh, 9 volts run to it and we're gonna means we're gonna end up with an ugly wire sticking out the bottom of it but I don't really see too much of a way around that at this point there is uh, if I use it if I use it wisely there is an amount of space under the floorboards here that I can kind of chase wiring to but I can't rely on everything using that same path so uh, what I'm going to do now is start uh, laying in the lights at their uh, at their end point and then start working about working the wiring down to where it needs to all join up together and hope that the bowl of spaghetti at the end is not too big okay this looks like it's going to be a pretty elegant solution to the uh, console lighting issue uh, putting that many lights on the back wall and letting it shine through let me put the uh, uh, the uh, cabin in place and power it up and see how she looks okay I got everything in trying to squeeze it together the lights all look beautiful but it's, it's still fighting me a bit so I gotta go in there and see where I need to uh, shave some stuff off of the inside so that I can get these walls to close up more uh, more evenly securely and and uh, tightly Okay, it's getting late today and I'm getting punchy, so uh, I'm going to end it here. Now I've got, uh, I've got these guys in. I may try to hook those up to some power before we're done. But the big news is getting all of this in. Let me kill the lights on here for a second. Uh, those are all lit up. Look, look at gangbusters. Now the, the camera does overexpose them, so they're not quite this bright. Uh, change the color balance there just so you can see it a little bit different with the uh, fluorescence off but uh, Look at that you can see every button switch and dial and knob and These are the lights up front Again, not this bright you're you're seeing it with you're seeing it with all of the uh, lights pumped up because that's what the camera does. I did notice a nasty light leak that's happening here that I'm going to have to address. That really just lit up the entire console inside. I should have light blocked the inside of that. So, But it's glued down good and tight now so I'm going to have to cover that up with a, another coat of paint and hope that takes care of it. Let's get these uh, tail lights on and see if they see if I can get any uh, action out of them tonight. And then we'll call it a day. Because it's been one, I tell you. Okay, I can't do this but except for holding the wires in by hand. So let me do a quick uh, showing of the tail light and there you go. Tail light and engine. Now believe that on both sides. I've got both tail lights and both engines ready to go. I just can't hook them both up because I've got very short wire leads on them. But there you go, there's both of them. And that's going to do it for tonight. I think I've done enough today and I'm going to uh, cheerfully uh, enjoy some television this evening and come back to it tomorrow. Okay, ladies and germs, it's Friday morning and we have ambitious goals for today. It's going to be a big old day today. I have a feeling in my bones I have big ambitions for today. Um, I am wiring up the last two sets of lights and they are the um i've built this little box here to contain the floor lights that will light up the vents uh in the floor and there's one last uh monitor on the back that i need to light up so i've got those all wired in and uh, i'm gonna get this thing closed up today i'm gonna get uh i, I know i've gotten in trouble before for being overly ambitious with my goals but I have a feeling that we're gonna get a lot done today if I can get this entire ship closed up today that will be a good goal and uh, still maybe not have any of the seams polished off and certainly not the painting but I want to get uh, me, unless things just start flying then then I might but uh, I really want to get the uh, wiring buttoned up and get this ship closed up and maybe into one piece today so hang on it's gonna go quickly I think well, things are going very well, and usually I 
don't like to interrupt myself when things are going very well because things stop going as well. But because things are going very well, I thought I would stop and show you a bit of internal workings at this point for the wings. You can see the the wiring going up to the uh, beacon that's up there and to the tail light and wrapping itself around and getting to the front here. My goal is to get everything down to two wires. Two wires and uh, this side has already been done hence the uh, the covering on it but uh, take care of that. Uh, but that's covered up. You can see the wire going up into there. Uh, the goal is to get everything down here to two wires that I can connect to the two wires coming out of the back here. So we're getting to the Rubik's Cubeness of it all where things have to kind of uh, go together one way and one way only. And um, so uh, that's the current state. I need to go ahead and put this piece on and then push that down into it. There will be some puttying that needs to be done back up in there. Uh, there will be a whole round of body work. I am confident of that much, but uh, uh, we're going to take a break and do some video here and then uh, the next thing you next thing you will see will be this whole module lit up. I'm confident of that. Okay, as promised, we have the lights on the tail part of the Raptor. Got two of them up there. Got two of them back here. And we've got the main engines. And now all I have to do is make it pretty. Now that it works, I just need to make it pretty. And the last bits of lighting I need to put in are going to be the little red lights that go on the front and back of the wing tips. And that should... Uh, that should make this thing a really uh, lit up little beastie. So now I'm going to uh, uh, do some solidifying here, I think, and uh, then decide the best method and order of construction. So I think uh, maybe I'll try out one wing next and see how easy that will go. But uh, yeah, cut the lights off here. Yeah, it's working. That's working. And again, a little bit more overblown than you'll see in the lights, uh, in the uh, real life. Pretty snazzy. Okay, welcome back. It is uh, Friday afternoon and I'm getting down to the uh, end of what I could do today. And there's only one more bit that I need to do before I can close this thing up. And that is to uh, replace these wingtip lights. They're just molded on in... Uh, on the kit but I want to replace those with actual tiny red lights uh, there's only one problem with this that was not evident in any of the other places that I put lighting and that is the front of this part is also the back of this part it is one solid part I cannot uh, uh, well the other in the other places where I put lights I was able to put chase light wiring down the inside of the two pieces that's one piece so you would think the the thing to do would be to uh, run a, I'm trying to find a pointer, trying to find a pointing device here, let me use this, would be to try to dremel out a little channel there and then run that channel down. Well, because those steps are already indented, that means this plastic is very thin at this point. So um, what I'm going to do is add this C channel. And I'm just going to make a box to box in the, the, the bottom of it here. Yeah, it's going to be a little clunky. It's not canon. But I think the added oomph of the lights will, will make up for that. I think people will forgive me if they see those. My only other question is, do I run the vertical channel at the front, at the center, or at the back to... Um, make yeah because i have to run wiring out and then this way so that i can get it into the rest of the body and i'm thinking that even if i put the front one on there what i may end up doing is putting the other two on there so to uh, uh, make it look cosmetically like it was intended and not just because uh, i was using it to chase wire so it's going to end up beefing up the entire inside of this wing Hopefully you'll be able to tell that what I'm doing as I get further along. 
Okay, the uh, passenger side, for lack of a better term, the the uh, starboard wing is on. Now this is going to have to be puttied in. That's a notoriously bad joint. It always has been, and it's a it's a uh, split uh, split devil. Either you make this joint fit, and this one is the one you have to fix. Or you make that one fit and you fix that one. So this one is actually easier to fix at the top. So that's what I'm going to do. But that's part of the body work. That's not what I'm working on today. I have got the uh, in, the lights in. Of course, once that's painted, I hope that will help disguise a lot of that. But that's the T-channel that the uh, lights uh, wiring is running through. The uh, wiring itself is turning into more and more of a mess. But... Fortunately, I've only got one more wing to apply and two more wires to come through. So uh, we're getting close. I mean, we'll get this buttoned up pretty soon. Well, it is, checking the lock, clock on the wall, a quarter after six on Friday night. And it's time for me to shut down for the week. Uh, I started today with lofty goals, lofty goals. And I have to tell you, I was able to achieve them. Now, I will tell you. There is a lot of body work that needs to be done on this to clean up some seams and all that kind of stuff. But I am so proud to show off what I got done lighting-wise. And here we go. Three, two, I feel like what Dick Clark must have felt like on New Year's Eve. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. I'm counting fast because my battery's getting ready to die on the camera. Three, two, one. Boom. Chakalaka. We've got footlights. We've got tail lights up here. We've got tail lights. We've got engine lights. We've got lights over here. Uh, most importantly, we've got cockpit lights. And I will pick this up so you're not seeing the lights off the reflection on the glass table. But I will uh, zoom in to show you the lights on the uh, interior and there is one light back on that back wall there are the lights that light up the floor there are the lights that light up the uh, instruments and then we get around to the front and there are the lights that light up the main instruments in the front uh, I'm kind of tempted not to put the pilots in now because of how much they would uh, block but now I'm gonna do it so it looks ugly. Uh, the seams, I've got some, uh, uh, come on, get back into focus. There you go. I've got, let me turn this back on. We're back on the other white balance setting. And I've got uh, some gaps that need filling. And I've got some tulip into some of those gaps to help start with the filling process. I'm going to let that heal all weekend. Come back to it Monday. Start filing some seams, giving it some tender loving care and getting it ready to be finished uh, but you can see I opted for the 1T approach on those lights on the uh, covers for those uh, the wiring there um, yeah looking very very good very happy good day's work a good a great day's work this fits in problematically right for now because I don't have the uh, top ceiling secured but it, and I don't have the landing gear on and a bunch of little details I don't have on but uh, that's where she's gonna sit and very quickly that's gonna bring it into uh, this week's work uh, on the Raptor uh, good chunk of work a great chunk of work done uh, working with Paul's photo edge very much fun some of it a little bit too up too too tiny for my eyes to contemplate but I got through it um, the lighting on this getting the uh, the key to getting the lighting done was to have the um, uh, strip lights going behind it I thought I was gonna have to put a bunch of individual SM LEDs in there did not have to do that so very happy for that outcome that saved me uh, that saved me probably a day's worth of work and maybe two myocardial infarctions who knows uh, but that much is done. That gave me time and liberty to put the other little red lights all over the rest of it because I wanted to have that kind of fun. So until next week, when we get back to finishing, we're doing the beauty work on this next week. So uh, until then, be good, be good to each other, and I will see you back here next time. Don't you miss it.